Good evening, Cebu. Good evening, Philippines. I am Mike Lopez, and you're watching the maiden episode of Open Mic. And we are very privileged tonight because we have we're starting this show with a bang. I don't th I don't know how we're we're going to be able to top this after tonight. But we are very privileged to have none other than the front runner for the Philippine presidency, if she is going to run, Senator Grace Po. Senator Grace Po. Hello, Mike. Congratulations on your maiden episode. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Uh, with with you know with the permission of the public, I will have to call you chair. Oh. Because I am just... used to it. <laughs> yes, please, please do. That, that uh, memories of uh, happier times. <laughs> <laughs> Before the rush of politics. Uh, yes, yes. I was a board member uh, during the term of uh, Senator Grace Poe at the MTRCB, and I think I was the youngest then. You were the youngest. Actually, that's a disclaimer of Mike that he was a member of the MTRCB. That's how we got to know each other. But more importantly is how much I admire this work in the MTRCB before. As mm -hmm. you know, MTRCB was usually known for, was known for censorship. But ever since we had that discussion that it should be intelligent viewership and then also parental guidance more than anything else. So I thank you for that, Mike. Well, thank you. It was a <laughs> pleasure serving with you. Uh, but you know, I'm very curious. We mentioned the MTRCB and well, 2004, um, it was a bitter political rivalry between President Arroyo and your father, the late, uh, great FPJ. Thank you. How did you feel when you, real, when you found out that you know, I'm uh, not only a GMA appointee, but I'm also, I was also, I'm also very close to, oh, to her? You know, that's what people don't realize, is that um, it doesn't matter to me if somebody who appointed you happens to be an opponent or belongs to a different uh, party or administration. The important thing is your competency and your integrity. Yes. Diba? That's why I've actually retained those uh, also in the board. Uh, of course, uh, we wanted more of you in there, mm. uh, but we needed the approval of this uh, administration. administration. So I, I also did not want under this administration. Anyway, no, I don't know what your <laughs> reasons are, but you know, I was glad that you were there, at least for my first year of transition. I was very nervous. I was only there for two years. You were there at least for the first year. Yeah, but and I you was, did a lot. I was very nervous. That's the first day. I said, okay, I have to, full disclosure, tell you yeah. uh, uh, the truth. You know, I'm close to her also. But, you know, that's why I can really attest that uh, you never let it get in the way, not just of our professional relationship, yes. but we've kept in touch ever since. I value honesty eh, and candidness. And you were... I don't know, some people might call it so bold as to say, you know, uh, GMA is my friend. I'm like, good for you. You know where you could be friends too. No, but seriously, Mike, it's your winning personality. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. But, you know, so much has happened since 2010. Yes. And now uh, you are a senator. And not only are you a senator, you are the front runner. Whether you are running or not. But are mm -hmm. you? Well... Of course, I'm considering it. I mean, right now, I'm doing what I can to prepare if in case I do decide to run. Um, it's a lot of prayers, a lot of consultation. At the end, um, although it's a personal decision, you have to realize that uh, it's a far-reaching um, consequence for everyone, That's whatever right. your decision is. That's right. It's, uh, it's something, I think, that uh, is destined more than anything. No? That's yeah. what they say. The presidency is a matter of destiny. No, you, you, you can't really pursue it. Eh? I mean, you can only prepare, but you can't really desire it so much because it could be very elusive to somebody chasing it. And, and, and <laughs> you don't know. Like, look at the president. He never had the experience. I mean, he wasn't, uh, the president wasn't even considering it or was even being considered. But I think that overall, I think he was able to restore also trust in government. It's funny when you said uh, elusive to those chasing it. I mean, it's some. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it appears, it be, no? it it appears be, like yes. some uh, for some people who are chasing it, it is elusive. Speaking of, it seems like uh, you're leading the pack. I invited you to come here yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the other candidates, I don't know if you have any inside information. I it don't know, like Mike, what happened? I mean, but we planned this two weeks ago. And then just last night or two nights ago, very recently, I found out that the others were also coming. But I said, the province of Cebu is a... Is, is big. big and there's a lot of big things that we can do for Cebu the more of us who come here 
and recognize it, the better. But the bottom line there is, follow the leader. And <laughs> I think they followed you. Well, I don't know. You, you, tra you trended it. You trended it. <laughs> well, uh, well, I take responsibility for that statement. Um, but uh, some people say that you are a child of the industry. That's why you have this. Me you're really media savvy. And the first route to government was really MTRCB. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of people do not know is that you took up political science yes. in Boston College. Yes, I A did. very good school in the United States, yes. in the East Coast. Ha tell us about your experience. Well, actually, for college, I went to the University of the Philippines, Manila, for about a year and a half, two years, and I took up development studies. So that includes administration, government administration, uh, urban planning, all, all the different things for the development of a particular country. But then after that, I, I transferred to BC, and that's where I finished my political science degree with a concentration in international politics and political theory. So, I mean, for me, I, it was, uh, you know, it was my interest. But so it's I didn't really. Been your it's been my interest. I was in the UP Student Council. I was the batch representative oh. of the freshman assembly. Uh, but you know, I never really thought that I would leap and actually be in actual government uh, service. So it was more theoretical. It was the interest yeah. in politics. It's always been maybe I think at the back of my head that you know something I can do more for the country. But I started out really just student council. When you were there in Boston, what did you? What you know? What's the one learning you can say that uh, you know change? You know, life changing, a life changing learning that you carry with you until today. Well, I learned independence because you're there on your own. Number two, I learned uh, how it is to be really lonely. Oh. I mean, because, you know, being away, you, even if your friends are there from, from high school, it's different. Huh? You're, you're in, a to in a different country. It's so cold. So I never realized that it could be so lonely um, being away. The cold uh, bothered you. And unlike, the cold, yes. Unlike Elsa, the cold never bothered her. Yeah, no, no, no. Hindi ako Elsa, Pinoy na Pinoy. On the contrary of what other people say. But, but also, in, in BC, what I learned is that um, if you have... A, equal treatment and opportunity for everyone everybody has you know not that entitlement eh, to succeed right. so i think i think that's those are the things i learned another uh high profile politician stateside is uh, who studied in uh, in boston but not in boston college i yeah. guess uh, is barack obama I think he went to Harvard naman yata. But still in eh, Boston. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, of course, uh, it's a world's away, but still we see... I'm, I'm making the comparison because if you run for president, if you, if you listen to the appeal of a lot of people, then you would be, I think, in a very similar situation as President Obama in 2008. Yes. You know, junior senator. Uh, he was being criticized as Hilao. And uh, also Kenyan. And also, the roots uh, yeah. were also questioned. So it's yeah. a... Uh, have you, uh, have you ever thought of the similarity between the situation then and yours? Well, again, I think that um, I don't want to be so bold as to compare myself to him. But, but what I'm thinking, okay, similarities of a struggle. Like the, he, they were saying he was too new in politics, mm -hmm. but I guess he represented hope. Yes. Um, and then they questioned also his roots um, in Kenya. Apparently, <laughs> they said he might have been born there. Um, and then... Um, but not only that, I mean, there are other people, like for example, when they question my citizenship, this is what they did also to my father, but also to Secretary Jesse Robredo. Oh, really? When he was running for mayor in, in, um, in his place, in, yeah, in Bicol, in Naga, they questioned his uh, citizenship because they said that he, he's Chinese. Yes, I remember that mm, issue. Now I, remember, yeah. now I remember that issue. Um, well, speaking of being a, you know, a foundling, and well, there is always this raging issue about you being the supposed uh, <laughs> love child uh, of uh, President Marcos. Then we would have been related. No, so no because no, no, that's no, the Marcos yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the mother side. <laughs> <laughs> By law, maybe, but uh, no, there's no did, truth to it. As far as I know. I did mean, you ever consider having a, a DNA test you know, to I just put the issue to I us? think I might as well, because anyway, Senator Bong Bong is uh, a classmate of mine in the Senate. Mm -hmm. I might as well ask him, you know, let's just get this rumor over with. But he said, no, I'd like to be a part of a, an urban legend. That was his answer. Wow. So, How many times has he been part of an urban legend? I don't know, but I'd want to steal <laughs> his coffee mug so I can get his DNA from his cup I or think, something. I think the Marcuses have been a subject of probably more urban, urban legends than <laughs> any family in the history of the world, yeah. probably. So. Yeah, but, but anyway, if, if that's the case, I mean, 
I don't mind taking a DNA test. But oh, really? I don't mind. I, I really don't. But, you know, we're thinking, but what's the basis of this? And sometimes, you know, before you entertain, um, like, any uh, Tom, Dick, or Harry presenting their DNA, I mean, of course, it's a bit intrusive, right? So yes. there has to be a compelling reason why there might be a lead and, and you will succumb to a maybe DNA test. Maybe if you run, uh, it, beca it becomes a political issue. Maybe you would have to be well, forced to Well, yeah, maybe. Why not? The why DNA not? As long as there's exam. no uh, two-meter line waiting for a test to, to be conducted, it's like... Before we proceed, let's uh, pause for a short break and we'll be back with Senator Grace Po or maybe future Madam President. No, please. <laughs> Chair is fine. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. We're back on Open Mic. By the way, we are taping with a live audience. We are being taped with a live audience here at the My TV Studios at JY Square Mall. We're back with Senator Poe. Hello again. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> I'd like to ask you about the economy. The economy, okay. uh, I, never, I didn't study uh, economics, but it's some, I'm a student of economics. I, I read about it. I, I'd like to think I understand <laughs> more than, uh, more than uh, uh, I ought to, but I'd like to ask you about the Ang Matuwid. Okay. Uh, it's the slogan of the president and expanded a bit more. Uh, they say, kung walang kurap, walang mahirap. Right. No? Uh, so if there is no corrupt, there is no uh, poor. Mm -hmm. But some economists dispute this mm -hmm. because they say it's the other way around. It's you address the economy or economic issues or poverty, and naturally uh, the problems of corruption will you know will solve themselves. Like for example, uh, uh, a progressive country on its own, even without a population control program you will see uh, an improvement in population control without any pro population program. Right. Because right. Uh, Education more, level, yeah. Education level, women have more choices, they, are, they have right. jobs, they have different priorities. So similarly, uh, they say that if you address the issue of economy or po and poverty, the biggest issue that, re that relates to the economy, uh, you will solve the problem of corruption. Yeah. It's, that's what other economists allege. Yes. So, meaning they, they, they contradict President Aquino's, uh, sometimes they say, very simplistic slogan. Yes. What, what do you say to that? Well, the President had to bring out a slow slogan during his campaign so that people can actually relate to it. And at that time, uh, one of the biggest uh, outcry of the people was really against corruption. Now, you're right. The economy has to be strengthened. Basic services have to be delivered um, so that we can alleviate people from poverty but before that can be done obviously you have to have it's almost like um, a simultaneous thing mm -hmm. you really have to roll out your economic projects but at the same time you have to have trusted people do this so maybe while you cannot a hundred percent cleanse the government from top to bottom uh, very key positions like for example uh, Customs, Finance, the Department of Customs, the Department of Finance, DSWD, DepEd, and the Presidency itself, uh, the President. They should at least be people with integrity and competence because it can start there. Um, our country grew by an average of about 6.2% this whole time of uh, President uh, Aquino, and that is an achievement. But talking to businessmen, they said that the biggest contributing factor to that growth it's not so much because we ran the country so well. It's because people trusted the president. I mean, they thought that on the whole, mm -hmm. he's an honest person. He may not exactly deliver everything that is expected, but um, they trusted him. So that helped. But then in the next administration, they're hoping that all these projects that took time to roll out will actually be started, will, will actually be implemented. Infrastructure... But, uh that's an interesting perspective from the business sector, but uh, some economists are also asserting that the last four five years is characterized by a missed opportunity. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, because uh, why wait till the next administration for infrastructure, for example? Yes. That's causing so much traffic. That's yes. They say it's not uh, fatal or try being stuck in traffic, you know? Right. Well, I mean, uh, definitely the DOTC and many other agencies dropped the ball in not being able to roll out those projects sooner. Um, in fact, even just having 
a second runway in Palawan, and then the MRT rehabilitation, uh, the extension of the LRT MRT, all of these things. And even in Cebu, uh, a third bridge linking, let's say, um, Mactan uh, to the Cebu, city yeah. through Cordoba. Yes. I mean, things like that. Um, the bidding process for the South Road project uh, mm -hmm. that, that they're doing, yes. which I'm glad is already kind of rolling. But yes. what I mean is the more you stall, those are all lost opportunities. That's why I said, if you want to address poverty and uh, employment, mm -hmm. the first thing that you really need to roll out is infrastructure. That's because right. of the multiplier effect, you get jobs from the area, you give jobs to the area, you source materials from the area, and then at the same time... And it controls it, inflation. It controls... Well, hopefully, it, uh, the the transfer of goods and services is exactly. Cheaper. Then you help the poorest sector of society, which is the farmers in agriculture, because they're able to transport their items. And remember, infrastructure is not limited to roads and bridges. Mm -hmm. You also have dams to provide irrigation. You have water entrapment facilities. You have post harvest facilities. All these things, even telecommunication. Yes, you mentioned it's internet all speed. infra. Yes, they yes. cell towers. The problem is, um, we piggyback on a particular outdated uh, system when, when actually we can just pay for a provider to bounce off our signals. I'm sorry, I'm not a very technical person. It seems but, like you are. <laughs> but no, something like well, thank you. But another thing is, um, for 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 telecommunication, you. To build a cell site or a cell tower in a particular locality, mm -hmm. you need to get at least 15 permits of approval That's from right. the local governments. It takes forever. So your signal is poor. That's, That's right. Yeah. I understand that because uh, one, one telco provider was interested to set up a you know, property uh, that we have. And, uh, and, well, it was taking forever. I said, so we're not going to wait for it you. It takes long. Yes. It takes long, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's interesting that you have a, not just a working grasp of the issues about economic and you know, infrastructure, etc. But it seems like you've studied everything. Not everything. Nobody has a monopoly of what's right and wrong. But I try to learn. I, the day you stop being a student, mm. it's really the day I think that you are doomed for failure. But I think a big challenge for, for any president. No? Uh, so I, I appreciate some of uh, what President Aquino has done, even if I am a critic. But um, I'd also like to say that uh, I think there has to be a balance. No? Uh, I think what Pinoy is good at is communicating his vision. Yes, no? yes. And what, what, that's why I agree that there was a wasted opportunity there because he had enormous political capital working for him. Mm -hmm to not just in, uh, pursue the reforms you know, in the bureaucracy, but actually uh, build what needs to be built. Yes. You know? uh, I was talking to President Arroyo before. I said, his weakness, uh, your, your, your weakness is his strength. And vice versa, right? Yes. So she was focused on economics yeah. and a vision you know, on, on building the country, but uh, I think she failed to communicate her vision. So yeah. it, it was not translated into a language palatable yeah. to, to the general public. Do you think that you would be a combination of both? Oh my gosh, well, I hope so, uh, if ever. <laughs> I mean, I'm a mother. I said, you know, even if I hope that they don't... Um, some people say, what is your experience that will bring you uh, competency in this job? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have many different experiences. Even my education may bring this, my experience in the Senate, the MTRCB, although short. But I think being a teacher is also important. Huh? Yes. Because number one, you really have to study what you would like to implement, what you would like to communicate to the students. And then you have to be able to encourage them. You know, leadership is really not just about being intelligent or being effective. It's bringing people together towards this vision. vision. And also, it's empowering the people. In short, you're the leader, but not to make yourself powerful alone, but empowering people. What can you give them so that they will be productive, that, so that their standards of living will will uh, increase things like that so it, it seems for me I'm, I'm very impressed at how you see leadership yeah. it's more it should be holistic in, in, in a word so. it should be holistic you, no? you, you can you should be competent and intelligent but you should also be an inspiration but uh, some some of your critics uh, secretary Mar said that you are Hilao <laughs> but well. you, you know let me just say this uh, allow me to say this how can I just feel that to say that you are Hilao. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Secretary Mar. Easy, easy, easy. No, <laughs> no I'm sorry, Secretary. But you know, you're free yeah. to, to come to the show. But 
I think it, yeah. it's kind of ironic because yeah. it seems like an indictment against his endorser and the endorser's mother. Oh, because remember, yeah. President uh, Aquino's mother, she was hilaw yeah. in, a you know, in a political sense yeah. because uh, she was a housewife. Well, so, I, you know, when you say that it's, it's, it's wrong to be hilaw, uh, you, you should look at the person endorsing you <laughs> and the mother of the person endorsing you. I mean, that, that's just my idea. Well, well, thank you to, <laughs> thank you for coming to my rescue there. But, but actually, okay lang ang manibalang eh. I think I'm more manibalang than hilaw. May halong tamis at asim. Okay na yun. <laughs> Kesa naman lamog. Oh! <laughs> Kesa naman lamog. <laughs> okay, no, okay. but President Obama, you know, that, going back to that example, I was a critic of President Obama. My friend Ryan there knows that. We were critics in 08. But I would, I would admit that I was... I Who was do you wrong. like now in the front runners? Um, I like Hillary. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't agree with everything she stands yeah, for. Say but, Hillary. Uh, but I'm generally How for How about Hillary. Jeb Bush? Um, no. No? <laughs> Donald like Trump. I, well, for comic relief. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> No, I'm just interested. How about you? Well, no, I mean, of course, Hillary, I think that she has the experience. Um, well, Jab, I didn't, you know, I, I heard him in some interviews. I think he's pretty okay. He's been, by the way, to the country a few times. I was oh, really? surprised. When he, at the time, an interim, when he was in public, wasn't in public office, he came to the Philippines. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Yeah. What I know, Lang, is that he will have some edge because he speaks Spanish. Oh, and, and his, his wife, wife is yeah. Latina. So that would probably and get. I know what were they saying? Uh, Florida learned from the Philippine elections. In <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> never mind. The way he was governed yes, at that time. Yes, yes, he was governed. Oh, yeah. yeah, never mind. Let's let's skip that. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> we'll be very controversial after. Yeah, no, that, no, 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 no. Um, you mentioned the Bureau of Customs earlier. Yeah. No? Um, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, the balik bayan boxes. Yeah. It's it's all the rage everywhere on Facebook. People are, uh, people are talking about the balik yeah. boxes, and the memes are just so hilarious. I really share me one. The meme, I can show you one here. You but sure? it's they're really hilarious. But even if they're funny, the issue is really not funny at all. I know. What are, what's your take on? You know, on I that? lived in the U.S. right, and simple joys that you want to send your family. You know. Guide my parents, even if you, maybe it's available in the grocery, but to, to receive the lata or like soap or. And there's a different smell. Ay, ba yung amoy? the smell of the balik bayan box? <laughs> Magka, what is that? Magkahalong shampoo <laughs> at saka chocolate. I, I don't know. It's so bango. Diba parang. Oh, okay. So clean air. Anyway, so lahat yan, parang sinasabi ko, ang babaw lang ng kaligayan. 26 billion pesos ang pina, uh, is what the OFWs remit every year. Um, in fact, there's a problem now with, with their terminal fees because it's bundled with their uh, ticket fees. So they don't even get a refund for that when in reality, wow. they shouldn't be paying a terminal exactly. fee. So tapos biglang you're going to do this. Let me just ask a simple question. Do they even have enough manpower in the Bureau of Customs to inspect each and every box? Mm -hmm. Kaya nga sabi nila, hindi na raw hari ng padala eh. Um, Ano nga? On Facebook, yari right? ang padala. Yari ang padala. <laughs> hindi na hari ang padala, yari ang padala. At saka hindi na pera padala. Pag nakialam pa ang customs dito, baka maging um, pera ang... Ay, hindi na pera ang padala, pera ang padulas. <laughs> padulas is like a... Well, it's a yeah. colo It's a term for... I'm not, I'm not familiar. Greasing Gre Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So th th that's really one of the yeah. main issues now on social media. So it's I'm calling, I'm actually submitting um, a, a resolution for a Senate inquiry. Well, hopefully we can have him um, in the Senate explaining why he's doing this. Yeah. Because I think it's easier to catch the bigger fish. I mean, easier uh, in principle, ah, because you can see their containers and mas madaling buksan yun kesa to open each and every box of those balik bayan boxes. And 10,000 pesos and above is already taxed. That's what they're trying to say. Can you imagine what are you going to do with a calculator? You, you're going to compute everything there? I, I, I just think it, it's another, another opportunity for corruption. Yes. So what do you think about Senator Recto's proposal of x-rays? I think that's good. Because it, it, it lessens human intervention. Yes. And, and we really ought to have that, even for security reasons. Mm -hmm. So that we know that what's going in our ports is actually should be here, not trash. That's actually been kept in our ports since 2013. Did you know that? Yeah, I heard so, about that. Uh, there's just so many issues that, uh, yeah, sorry, that affect us and uh, that anger you know, the people. But before we pause for a break, I'd like to ask your thoughts on 
the SC's decision, the Supreme Court's decision uh, to on Senator and Senator Enrile's bail. We're back here on Open Mic. Senator Grace Poe was answering a, was just about to answer a question about Senator Enrile's uh, bail uh, yes. based on the decision of the Supreme Court that allows it. Well, one thing is, we have to respect the courts for their decision. I don't think uh, other branches of government should meddle in mm -hmm. the decision. On the other hand, we also have to, uh, it would be nice for an ordinary citizen to be able to understand the reason behind it. Because it can be very technical, uh, yes, very, sure it uh, it's all legalis legalistic. And somebody from the Supreme Court should be able to explain it in simple, understandable terms why this is so. Um, this is what I understand it to be. Apparently, if you're a senior citizen, whatever your crime is and the penalty, they'll say the penalty is life imprisonment, mm -hmm. uh, it goes down one level. Okay. Parang they, they, they ease it a bit. All right. So in that case, uh, if it's, let's say, non-bailable, it becomes, becomes bailable. bailable. Parang ganun, ha? Again, I'm not a lawyer, but this is how I understand it. But one thing is, we remember, he's 92 years old. Maybe politically for the government, I mean, for them to be responsible for him being there, something happens to him. But um, I think the court should be able to explain. Uh, because I don't think that many of our countrymen are convinced. Although for humanitarian reasons, you can, you can, you can probably say, yeah, that's fine. But uh, when it comes to discussions in the Senate and political discourses and debates, he always brings something to the table yeah. because you know, he's, he's kind he's of... JPE. He's JPE, even with his, uh, you know, stamina at his age, his bravado. I mean, you know... You're looking forward to having him there? You know, I don't think I would have uh, had as much fulfillment passing the FOI in the Senate if I didn't debate with two people, Senator Enrile and Senator Miriam Defensor wow. Santiago. Because, okay, because that's almost like your baptism of fire. I mean, somebody, it's always something you will look back to. Now, I had a chance to be on the floor being interpolated by both of them. So that, that is an experience. That would be uh, a dream come true for me also. Oh, yeah, you would to debate with especially Senator Santiago. Oh, but she was <laughs> nice to me. She was nice to me because she said, I feel so maternal towards you. I'll, go, I'll take it, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if she will feel the same way for me. Oh, why not? You're very cute. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, before we, we, before uh, we started taping, two hours ago, I posted it on Facebook uh, that we were having Senator Poe and I, I was soliciting uh, comments and questions from from the people so I'll randomly select uh, uh, three questions um, Mark Estradas he used to be commissioner of the NYC and also board member of the MTRCB oh yeah I remember attorney hello Mark. hi attorney question who is Mr. Leomanzares Oh, Mr. Lemanzares, my husband. Well, you've never met him? <laughs> but I think because uh, peop some people are anxious about spouses. No? Yeah. So. Well, you know, one thing is with my husband, he's always been um, uh, in the sidelines. Okay? He's not, he's not uh, very comfortable, actually, with politics. Mm. But he's a supportive husband, and, and he's a very confident uh, husband and father. I mean, he's a good uh, dad to my kids. Um, he is an IT guy, so as you know, he's not really political. But he enjoys going to uh, showbiz events. Who doesn't? I know, who doesn't, <laughs> right? Um, well, there, there, there's a very good question here. Um, why are you run, if ever, no? This is just jumping the gun on running for president, but uh, he says, why are you really running for the presidency? Uh, assuming that you are. Yes. Um, you have an amazing personal life. The presidency will just complicate it. Correct. Please don't provide idealistic answers. <laughs> um, so, okay. But you know what? It's hard not to provide an idealistic answer because I don't think we should lose our idealism. For one thing, I think it is truly uh, a, an opportunity to make big changes for our country. You know, having lived in the U.S., right, and in other countries, I mean, I don't deny that. Which other countries have I you mean, lived in? Well, no, visited other oh, countries. Visited. But having lived in the U.S. Um, and visited other countries, you see how much they've improved by leaps and bounds in the last decade or two decades. And you say, why can't we have the same thing? And then you realize the accountability of government officials in those countries. Mind you, corruption's not 100% 
uh, cleaned up in those countries either. Yeah. But the system works. So being in the legislative branch, I see what our limitations are. We can draft all the best laws in the world, but at the end of the day, it's the executive that implements it. And sadly, here in this country, the president has so much uh, uh, say in how things will be implemented and whatever. I think that it's really time to decentralize also So you certain believe in powers. charter change? Well, I think that the Constitution is a living document that mm -hmm. needs to be amended, to be in tune with the times. So the President's powers can be clipped a bit. I Are really believe that. Are you leaning toward parliamentary federal? I think that the debate should be uh, uh, allowed. Okay. I'm not saying, again, whether it's federalism or parliamentary, that it's the right thing. Because you need as many heads debating and discussing the merits of both. Uh, should we remain the way we are? Uh, I think that it, that's really open for discussion. By the way, that question was from Nico Ian Apuli. Hello. Um, I, I read a, co a question from Billy Shenes. Uh, he's a radio personality. What can you say about this comment from many disillusioned Filipinos that whoever is president, whoever you know, is in Malacanang, uh, we will never progress because uh, there's just so much corruption. It's a defeatist mindset and it's, yeah. it's pervasive. Yes. Well, I don't blame some of our countrymen who feel that way. Uh, but, but let's look back and see what happened. I think at the time that President Aquino was in office, just, that, just the credibility that he had and the honesty that he projected, we were able to grow by 6.2% economically. Now, let's say there are other areas in government where we're still stagnant, but that is still quite something. And if there's anything that's measurable, it's really GDP, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. it does, GDP doesn't measure the quality of life, yes. but somehow it, it measures a certain uh, progress. Now, during the time of uh, President Cory, the time of President Marcos, there was like some bump in our economy. That's caused by heavily borrowing from the World Bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, um, when he was there, but he was able to implement a lot of projects, but our growth remained pretty much until 4% in But stagnant. there were global factors. There were also the global factors. Cold War, etc. And the oil crisis yeah. of the 70s. And then, when uh, President Cory took over, what was the problem? Coup d'etat. Yes. Right? And then the new uh, administration that she had. So, instead of investors coming over here, uh, they felt that it was too unstable. And then in the 90s, what was the problem aside from the Asian crisis? The power crisis in the Philippines. Mm. Right? Puro brown out. You cannot, you cannot rely on manufacturing to come here. In the 2000s, well, again, some question about mandate. So there was that uncertainty. Now with President Noy Noy, there's a relative peace in all of those you fronts. You President Arroyo. <laughs> there was a global crisis. What do you think? Her no, no, in the 2000s. Oh, wait, oh, no, Arab and then uh, President oh. Arroyo. It was uh, the question of mandate. Yeah. I mean, there was ah, a, that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what do you think about uh, the the 30 plus quarters of uninterrupted economic growth, considering that there was a global crisis in 07? You know, the, this is explained well. We are. Uh, we haven't really invested uh, much beyond our own borders. Yeah. Even our own consumers are con concentrated on our own. Even, even uh, our, our exports are weaker than what we actually import. So, in fact, if there's a crisis there, we're not as much affected because um, our manufacturing here is not that strong. So it's really not that good, okay? Yes. But, but then, yes, in, in times like that, the Philippines is not dependent or is not necessarily affected immediately by a global crisis. But what's really keeping us afloat also now is the price of oil. Because now we're like, what, at uh, 65 or $45 per barrel, something like that. When it reached 125, we were killed. I mean, because of the power cost in the country, and that's another problem that we really need to look at. The cost of electricity in this country is too high. Well, last question. It's a very sensitive topic. Uh, Fidelo Christopher Rojas, uh, he's a friend of mine, uh, Fifi, uh, he's asking about the West Philippine Sea. Okay. Uh, a mentor of mine says, um, how do you put the tooth toothpaste back into the tube? In oh, relation you know, to mahirap talaga our China, you know, our relationship oh. with China, and then we have a pending uh, case at the Hague. Yes. If you become president, hypothetical, um, how do you think this this you would uh, how would you address this issue, and uh, would you pursue a more diplomatic track? You know, we had a uh, there was a briefing by Justice Carpio, mm -hmm. I heard and about that. and he said it it was a brilliant uh, presentation. 
it's true, we really dropped the ball on that one. Because in the last two years, they were able to build multiple runways, uh, bases, etc. How do you put it back? How do you, how do you uh, unbreak something that's been broken? But, you know, all is not lost. I really think that this chest beating between countries is not really productive. Yes. Um, many countries never totally resolved issues between them, but they were able to coexist together. Um, I wish I could remember now the actual example that he had where a uh, an actual uh, resolution between disputes were never really resolved 100%. But eventually, um, it was, you know, time will hopefully uh, ease the tension. Yes. But the problem now is really we have to continue our arbitration case. We cannot give that up because we already started it. But there are also other ways to continue bilateral talks with China, economic, cultural, bilateral talks. Now, um, joint exploration, this is a very tricky thing because again it will be a question on who is owning it to grant the at permission some point. yeah at some point um but remember even the u.s that condemns chinese uh that uh, china human rights violations continue bilateral talks Correct. and many other talks with china there are areas for uh, mutual uh, cooperation and there and are agreements. areas of uh, disagreement and we just agree to disagree on yeah on these things right? yeah but you know what mike the, the greatest tragedy of this are the fishermen for the fishermen because i think i love that you always put a human dimension no i feel like i'm so elitist because mine are you know international <laughs> issues and you always have you know philip you always think of the filipinos no because this <laughs> is like thousands of hectares okay and uh the coral reefs that were actually destroyed because of reclamation and um the the what they call this the, the the borders that they put there mm. that our fishermen lose us i think 20 percent of what they could actually get and that's a lot and i really think that we need to protect our environment even if there's no gas or oil in that area just the fish and the marine life is really worth saving that's right well said i think you're ready you're ready <laughs> to run for president or the marathon uh, <laughs> either way iron man in cebu how was that yes. that was pretty good yeah always successful yeah. because anything that's held in cebu is successful of the apex course. summit is we're at the height of the apex summit so the traffic is just horrible but well it's for the country uh, it's yes. uh, our contribution to to nation building and our relationship with the the you know member economies of apex but you know before we close if you do run okay uh, for president Especially, you know, cognizant of every everything else that's happened in the past, you know, with our former leaders and even yes. in other countries, so some some of the greatest, uh, most celebrated leaders fell from grace. Yes. Um, do you think it's worth it? Is the presidency worth it? This is something that I continuously uh, struggle with every day, because as they say, "Kusa mo ba talaga magpresidente? Mo kang lahat yata na nagiging presidente ay makukulong." <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think that if you are not malicious in your intent, that you, you know, there's no uh, grand conspiracy to really defraud or to, to steal, I think. I think we have to really look at, you know, it's always a risk because to I, take I on leadership you know roles. I ask this because even before uh, you've made up your mind and actually declared, they're trying to you, you are a target obviously of black Ay, propaganda I have and it's big, just gonna get worse i know i have a big uh, red dot on my forehead <laughs> actually and my forehead's not exactly that uh discreet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or inconspicuous um so that's that's all part of it but again who it is a rare privilege to be in a position also where the, the trust rating given to you by the public is so high. Actually, when people look at the surveys, they look at the lead who's leading, no? I look at the other page, which is the trust rating, uh, which is what people actually believe in if they believe in what you're doing. And that's the one that, that gives me the inspiration and the high to, to even consider it. Again, very well said. No, no. I promised uh, our friend from Rapper, is she here? No. Oh, I think Camille already left. Yeah, yeah. she... She left already? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, may, may I greet also like some of the, the, the youth uh, members here? Yes, we, uh, we have in the audience uh, yes. some, some of our student leaders from the University of San Carlos. Hello, University of San Tino. Carlos. Thank you for your warm welcome. And from today's Carolinian. Oh. Are they here? The school, Carolinian. The school paper and all access. Uh, Congratulations to all of you. San Carlos, your University of San Carlos. 
I loved your intramurals, your cheerleading Thank competition. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and I said, buti na lang cheerleading na inapuntahan ko mas ano pa yan. So I really thank you fun. for uh, accepting I would like to thank uh, former NYC chief Leon Flores. Yes, Leon is here. here. Our yeah, friend Leon, Leon Flores is also from Cebu. Leon ah, is from Cebu. Oh, there you go. That's why. And, and ikaw kasi NYC. You know, NYC is a good training ground. I really <laughs> think you guys should train SK possible candidates. Actually, the, the the national federation sits yeah. as ex official, but uh, the the relationship is. Dibale, you help me out here. <laughs> uh, never mind. Well, whatever. That's, that's for another guesting. Years ago. <laughs> that's that's for another guesting. Yes. You'll have the NYC. Um, so uh, we had a very good time with Senator Grace. But again, thank you for accepting uh, our invitation to fly all the way to Cebu and to <laughs> to see USC, right, or right. my alma mater. By the way. What, Maybe you can all join us here. Whatever she said. Then, hey, come on, guys. Come on whatever here. Whatever she said there in USC, they might say it's scripted. You, you said some good stuff about me. So. Oh, no, no, no. You deserve it and more, actually. Yes. Uh, so, at least... Once again, thank you, Senator Grace Poe, yeah. for uh, accepting our invitation for the intelligent and very insightful conversation. Yes. I wish you really all the best. Well, it's thank you for this invitation and for all the young, lovely young people around here. Thank Student you for your leaders. support. Thank you. Congratulations. Right. Till next week uh, on another episode of Open Mic, this has been Mike Lopez. Good night and Godspeed. Yay! Yeah. 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 Yeah.